Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds, where we like to read a lot of manga and watch a lot of anime and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lehua Superfina. And the co host, Mikhail Casanova. We are going to talk about Classroom of the Elite in this episode because Mikhail just binge watched it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I actually watched it when it first aired and I was waiting for the next episode weekly. I was very interested in it and i actually read some of the manga i yeah i did but i don't know why i stopped i'm wondering if the scanlations were ahead of the anime but not that far ahead or did i not want spoilers i wasn't sure but i really liked how things were revealed there's like a lot of suspense and mystery and that one main character, the protagonist, Kiyotaka, he was kind of aloof, but he had a lot of mystery. And he was just showing his skills, his personalities, little by little, while everybody else was kind of like a trope. <laughs> right? The, yeah, they, they look like characters straight out of the like, trails of cold steel. Like, even, I, I honestly think it's the same artist. Really? It, it looks, okay, so... Put it this way: If you were to put Rain Schwartzer next to Kia Taco, <laughs> did you not see it? Like they look, they look so much like character straight out. Of so it, anyway, um, one thing about Kia Taka I thought was really cool was how like they showed the mystique and mystery of his character through his eyes specifically. Yeah, and he wasn't the typical protagonist because in the beginning he talks about how he wants to be average he doesn't want to stand out he just wants to live a cruise life but he went to an elite school so it's like what but then he explains it's because he wants to go through that school so he can get all these opportunities that they guarantee you get after you graduate so he could live a what's it called relaxed non-stressful cruise life afterwards he's like i just want to make money and live do my own thing so i think we should talk about like what classroom of the elite is like if you were to describe it to someone that they're looking for a new anime to watch how would you describe it I would describe it as if you want to watch betrayal, you want to watch people stabbing each other in the back, but also have some happy endings here and there, watch Classroom of Elite. Yeah. So it, the the general premise is uh, that it's set in Japan, and basically you have these high schoolers that uh, are going to this school for the elite. and they, They're supposed to be like the cream of the crop. I guess you could see like hence high school of the elite and um each of the students that are there with their first uh was it the first semester or mm -hmm. first month they're given uh hundred points thousand? they're given i believe a hundred thousand points points that they can use as a currency and they were told you can use it however you want and many use them to buy things yeah, because, like, on the campus of the school is everything. Like, you got your mini, mini marts, your store shops. Uh, All kinds of shops, like even game stores. So some of these kids, they use it to buy consoles. And I kid you not, didn't they have, like, a Switch on it? Yeah. yeah it's like, what? But they didn't say it was a Switch. Yeah. Like, they it's completely, like, they have the capability of, uh, like, going to like even like entertainment outlets too like movie theaters and yeah for fun it's like literally a little town specifically for these students i don't remember but was that the only thing people used to buy things like they didn't use their regular money either or nope. was it a it was points only oh weird so it's like you can buy anything you want but you can't use the money your parents are giving you and the interesting thing is what she said you can use the points to buy anything and that means literally because <laughs> you can literally buy anything with those points if you have enough of it what i liked about this is when they first announce about the points they're like "Ooh, here's something cool and shiny here's something that we're giving you as a benefit because you are part of this elite school you deserve these points use it however you like like they're making it like a reward something mm -hmm. that's amazing and that's it and then later on they reveal okay you earn points through these and you lose points too <laughs> 
And the other thing, I, I guess you could say, like, what kind of interested me about this is the whole concept of the fact that they can do whatever they want on the campus. Like, they, they can either attend school, they can skip class, they can go and do the sports, they can really do whatever. There is no overbearing uh, authority figure over them. And that kind of made me think of like, okay, how we get shipped off to college. Well, you know, well, I say shipped off to college, but you know what I mean? Like we go off to college and like, that's the first time we have to really be on our own and be responsible for ourselves. And in the show, it kind of shows how like a lot of people just, they don't know how to deal with that much freedom, but there's a cost to that too, because each class is graded and if you don't meet certain criteria and that's not on an individual level, it's on a collective level because there's classes A, B, C, and D. And if you don't hit a certain curriculum level, then you get, I believe expelled. Yeah, you do. So remember when you talk about the points, so afterwards they learn why they weren't getting points so they were giving given an allowance of points every month was it every month or every week uh every every month every month and then at one point they weren't getting the same amount of points actually they didn't get any points yeah. they're like teacher what's going on and the teacher's like you guys are the worst just no she's like you guys are shit <laughs> And you are at the bottom. And she's explaining why. And and then they're asking, why didn't we get any points? And she's listing everything they've done. Miss class, skip class, sleeping in class, going on their phones, not paying attention, failing school. She listed everything like they noted everything they've done. And she said, we calculate it and you don't deserve any points. Yeah, she was brutal. And they were like, what? We didn't know this. And she's like, well, how do you figure you're going to get points? You thought it was just going to be handed to you? You need to work for these points. And you thought you could just breeze through the school? How idiotic of you. It was like reality hit them in the face hard. Yeah, she she had no chill. Like, she was so intimidating. And it's so crazy because, like, you could tell, like, there's a, a, a lot of, like, mystery and in intrigue like behind her and yeah like the presentation of her because it's like you get you don't get the impression from like the first couple inner uh like uh sh showings of her that she doesn't like the students she was more aloof she she not aloof but more like indifferent like she didn't care and it's sort of like she already had like a uh, preconceived notion yeah that they're gonna fail she's like i don't care you do what you do it's your own damn fault that's what it seemed like yeah. because i feel like all of those students were there based off of their entrance exams scores mm -hmm. and this class class d had the worst scores but they passed yeah i can i definitely see that it it really it really yeah, because wasn't it like the rank of your class also ranked where you were on like a societal standing? Because like class A, class B, class C, class D, the character, our main characters, uh, our main character, Kiyotaka, he's in class D. And uh, Suzanne, she's also in it too. Well, we'll get to her because she, she's interesting. <laughs> Well, I want to get to her now. Okay, we can go ahead. I want to get to her now. You She's like, British show podcast. I'm just co-hosting. Why didn't you mention that? Okay. Our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, she was introduced. She was like the second, no, maybe like third character that was introduced. Mm -hmm. And she has that whole Sundere vibe going on where she's nice yet kind of bitchy at other times and yeah, what point was she nice she thought she's a bitch the whole time well wasn't she nice on the bus in the first episode and she offered her seat Ye did she yeah i thought she did because the other character kikyo she's like excuse me to her other classmate who she didn't know was going to be her classmate she was telling him can you Give your seat to this old lady. These seats are meant for the elderly. And the other guy was being such a douche. I thought Susan didn't give it up. 
I thought she did. She said, I'll give my seat. Oh. And then that's how they first met each other. And then she spoke to Kiyotaka and she's like, you think I shouldn't have given my seat, huh? And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> And that's the thing that's kind of interesting is like how they really go to great lengths to showcase. He does not care about any of what's going on and or any of the people there. And you would think like, oh, he's just he's a trope character, because the thing is, it, it feels like it's a it's a, a satirical look at the tropes that we yeah. see so much in yeah. anime and manga and like you look at Kiyotaka and how he's just like oh he looks at everyone your trope your trope your trope your trope and you think he's a trope but he's not a trope you know, <laughs> you know how he's like looking at everybody your trope your trope your trope it's more like he was reading people and he's yeah. like oh you're this type of person these are the things you're gonna do I'm going to predict everything you're going to do so that way I can respond you, to you a certain way that's beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. And one of the characters he totally did that to was Kikyo because she was like the happy, bubbly person who's friends with everybody, who seems to be super kind. And he's like, okay, she's someone that vies for attention and wants to be liked by everyone. But he, he straight says it too. Doesn't yeah, he? yeah. But he also kind of knows that she can manipulate people. For example, when they had to do a study group because they needed to have passing scores to get points. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to get these four, three or four guys that had the worst scores ever. And those guys were like, nah, no, nah, I don't care, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then when he used Kikyo, they were like, yeah. They totally agree because she asked them. Well, you remember also because uh, Susan was trying to take the lead on that. And her attitude was not helping. She does not have that friendly aura like Kikyo does. She has this, she has an RBF. <laughs> Except her RBF isn't just a physical trait. It's a state of being that she's stuck in perpetually. And she also has like a monotone voice. And the only way you can truly understand what she means if she says it out loud, like she speaks out her thoughts. What's it called? Being eloquent. Be articulate. She needs to articulate her thoughts or else people would just think she's being a bitch. Yeah. And she's not she's just not very good at it at all. Um and she's she's got like a superiority complex and you can read very easily off from the beginning that she's got an inferiority complex that she's masking with her arrogance. It's just um it's just so funny because she is like the textbook definition of a tsundere. So Suzune is the epitome of a tsundere while we have these other tropes in the classroom that are introduced in the first episode. Like we have the guy who's the leader who can be friendly with everybody, who everybody doesn't mind listening to. And then we have the supporting female leader who's Is like... Uh, Takuya you got, you got to be? Yeah, it. he's like the boy next door. And I was thinking, oh, you're that person in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> you know that person in the classroom? That guy, the one that everybody listens to. And doesn't mind and likes, but doesn't really take initiative when it really matters. Well, and they, that that comes into play later, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then we had Kay, who's like the girl who immediately follows up, like, yeah, let's all be friends and work together throughout the year. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, you totally want that guy. You want to be the lead with him. Mm -hmm. I know what you are. Wait, wait, wasn't she dating him? Was she? Did they start dating eventually? I thought so. I thought so. Takuya had a girlfriend. Uh, mm, mm. I might have to rewatch it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to watch that again. And uh, there were like some other characters. I was like. Like Ida or Idi? Idi? I just know her as Sakura. She's basically the socially awkward character that's actually got an OnlyFans. I don't think she had. <laughs> what was it? I thought she just liked to post um, pictures of herself. She's famous. Yeah. She's famous, but she hides under that uh, 
But she's also, she legitimately is socially awkward. Yeah, it's like she became social through social media. Like, that was her outlet. While in real life, she's the opposite. Well, no, because she she is a she's a streamer and an OnlyFans. Well, it's not OnlyFans, but she sells that her type. pictures. Yeah, so it's OnlyFans. She monetizes from her pictures. <laughs> yeah, well, she she, she sells. <laughs> she was interesting. Like you kind of can tell who are characters that you're going to see frequently by how they're drawn. How colorful they are how sharp their eyes because there are some mobs i was about to say like the none of these characters are mobs <laughs> <laughs> like the ones that uh uh who blew their points on games and such those guys are kind of mobby yeah yeah you don't see them anymore yeah and then so throughout the show you just see them going through some challenges and trying to gain some points and then you're learning about the system and apparently it's supposed to be a secret and it's called what the s system with the points and such yeah and all the upperclassmen they know because they experienced it mm -hmm. and you don't know how bad it is until there's this one episode where they're trying to get old tests from an upperclassman and Kiyotaka could totally point him out by looking at his lunch. He saw by how, I guess, mediocre the choices of the lunch was. And this one line he said was, I could see how hard you're chewing that vegetable. <laughs> Times must be hard. <laughs> I was like, dang. <laughs> that, that, that was funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. And so... Kiyotaka was trying to buy the test scores and they were totally haggling. Like the older upperclassmen put a price and then Kiyotaka like lowered it down hard. What was it like the guy was like 40,000 points and he's like 15? No, he's he said 10,000. 10,000. He said 10,000. But he like, went up to 15. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, dang. But that's how they could use points they could use it however they wanted and then there's like another episode where Kiyotaka was talking to this other girl from class b i think and she was super popular and he saw how many points she had and he's like how can one student have this many points in the first semester mm -hmm. and so he was trying to like think about how other people were getting points and such i'm wondering about that too it's like girl who are you getting those points from one of the things that I really like about the show that it showcases is, is like there is no black and white. There are just a lot of different shades of gray and nobody is really a good character in this show. Oh, are you going? Are you talking about a certain character? Like, OK, so like Kikyo, um, she is she she's one of the who I was talking about earlier that comes off like she's she's trying to be everyone's friend and the problem with that is that uh she has a complex and when she sees that kiyotako is constantly with suzane and it seems like they're close and she keeps trying to get become friends with her and gets shot down, rejected. Multiple times, Multiple. over and over and again. Because Susanie could read her. She could read her. She was Easy. suspicious of her from the start. Yeah. And so, like, after a while, you, you get to see, like, Kikyo start to shed her colors. And she literally has two different personas. So, like, when she sheds the friendly, bubbly character, she is... Psycho. Like... Yeah, like don't <laughs> run, don't walk. Well, she's also like so. Sometimes psychos they're very impulsive, but this one she's she was calculative. That's a scary psycho. Yeah, she's like socio sociopathic. Yeah, it was a really good impression of that side of her because it kind of shows how far she'll go like, if she really wants to. Like, she, I could totally see her killing someone. Yeah, so one of the things that she did was to kill Taka when he found out about her, quote, secret, quote, 
she threatened to say that he raped her. He's like, how? There's no proof. And then she grabbed his hand, put it on her boob, and she said, your DNA is on my clothes at a specific spot. Yeah. From that, we can say that you did something to me. And I was like, dang. Yeah, she she wasn't playing around. But what she didn't take into uh, account was he's much smarter than she is. Oh, yeah. And that's something that you really come to see as the episodes and I, the manga chapters uh, flow is how much smarter Kiyotaka is compared to everyone. Even Suzune, who is the quote-unquote genius of Classroom D, he outsmarts everyone, including people in classes C, B, and A, mm -hmm. including, I think, the staff as well for the, the high school. He's literally a genius through and through. But he hides it because, yeah. well, it's there's a way that you can tell if someone is a genius if they can perfectly score a a certain grade over and over again. Like they calculated it, which was Kyotaka scored everything at 50 average. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a lottery. A lottery, you get random numbers, but if you can calculate the results, mm -hmm. then there's a pattern. And that means someone was a genius and set that up, which Kyotaka did. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, and it's also interesting too. Like when you get to see additional characters that are introduced, um, such as Suzanne's older brother, who's in class A, and he's also class president. School is he class president? He's a class president. He's a class president because on one episode, once he had an inkling of Kiyotaka's abilities, he wanted to bring Kiyotaka in as a secretary, I think, or treasurer, something like that. Well, we're just kind of kind of skipping ahead there because, like, there's lead up into that. Like, there's a point where he can conf uh, the brother confronts Suzanne and he's about to hit her, and the whole time you're really not sure what to think of Kiyotaka. You know, like there's nothing exceptional about him except for one scene where like they're all at the pool and like susan is like you don't do sports and he's like no i don't i don't do anything athletic and then when he takes off his clothes and she's like you're really built like he's got a martial arts body yeah he's ripped yeah he's like completely he's got an athletic martial arts uh build so when the brother is about to strike susan a, he steps in and he grabs him. And then when the brother strikes or he tries to attack uh, Kitaka, he can't land a blow on him at all. And the thing is, that completely unnerves him. And on by proxy, it unnerves Susan as well. That was a really good section of the show because I had no idea that Kitaka was physically fit. And I didn't know it was going to go that route. Like, I didn't even know that Susan A's brother was going to hit her. I thought that was a bit much. But that led to that scene. Yeah. And it made me wonder, okay, Kiyotaka, what else did you do? Not only are you intelligent, but you're also <laughs> physically advanced. So what's your story? How did we get here? Why do you have all these abilities? And throughout the show, I don't think he really shows his physical capabilities that much. Like, he really hides it. He kind of gives off a sloth feel. Oh, yeah. He's he's the definition of a sloth. And he hides his abilities really well. And he doesn't really use it. Even when there's fights or scene okay there's like a scene where he could have just beat up someone to shut them up but he doesn't he just uses words mm -hmm. and mind manipulation like a lot of people that i guess throw their weight around or are very smart when he he he's able to outsmart them and kind of not kind of he actually does he does intimidate them but he doesn't do anything beyond utilizing their own downfalls mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. he sees what are their character flaws and plays it against them and he does that with to the point where 
it's kind of an, a contradictory because he doesn't want to stand out. And yet he keeps getting put in positions to have to stand out. And as much as he may assume that people aren't paying attention, he's got the attention of a lot of people. Yeah, and I believe the root of all that is because he wants his class to advance. He wants his class to graduate because it, there must be a reason why he wants to graduate from this school. There's, yeah. a, there's a mystery to that, but it's like from the first episode where they threaten the students, if you don't do these things, then you will be expelled. And one of the things that he's paranoid is about is if any of his classmates is expelled, does that affect the class? Does that affect their time to graduate and such? Mm -hmm. They don't know. So they're not going to chance it. So that's why he's stepping in. Yeah. And that also goes back to the fact that, again, as we said earlier, he does not care about any of these characters. Like, you could assume if you look at all these other characters as tropes. You would assume that because Susan A is the Sendere and he's the protagonist, that they're, you know, by the red string bound to each other to get together because most tropes fall that, you know, they, they do that. Right, right, right. And you see her have character growth. But <laughs> while she's starting to develop interest in him, he has zero interest in her. He actually has three different girls interested in him kind of has a bit of a harem um but he doesn't have an interest in anyone he is literally a self-centered character and it's not self-centered in a negative way he's just like i'm minding my business i don't care about your problems mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this guy he's so intriguing there's so many facets of him and that's just one character then later on, when you are introduced to the other classes, you first see some thugs and you're thinking, oh, these are all bronze over brains and they're just so violent. And later on, we find out that they were actually being controlled by someone else. There is a mastermind behind them and it turned out to be, what is this guy's name from Class C? Gotta look him up. And the pretty boy? Yeah, the pretty boy who makes it seem like his vibe is mafia or host club, something like that. Yeah, I, I don't remember his name. I'm gonna look him up right now. First year arc, class C. His name is da -da 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 -da. Kakeru. That's his name. And somehow he has a control over everybody, and I feel like he just has the dirt on everyone, and he blackmails them, he manipulates them, and they're all just afraid, and that's why he's a leader. Different from the boy next door <laughs> that we have in Class D. Would you say he's kind of like his equal, in a way? No. No. Oh, you mean like... Pretty like boy next door sequel. Wow, he's actually drawn very different in the light novel compared to the anime. Really? Like that's him in the anime. Uh huh. That's him in the light novel. Oh, he looks not so thuggish. Yeah, the anime really draws. Like they really ham up his thuggishness. Yeah, that's why I said mafia. We're well, not mafia. A uh, gang, gang, host club. Yeah, he's 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 a creep. He's a creep, and then. You have class B, and I don't remember much about the students in class B. Only that one girl who seems to be the queen bee, the popular girl, the one that everybody follows. Like, to the point where some of them are a little obsessed with her. Where they're like, I'm so glad that I'm being graced by her presence. That was a little creepy. Yeah. And then in class A, we have this other person. Clarice. Yeah. She supposedly had the best scores in her year. And she, it, it looks like she has, like, this bodyguard who's her classmate. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of like one of those things where you always have that, uh, that one powerful figure intellectually. And they have a 
physical uh, bodyguard. I mean, Kakaru has that as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, yeah, he has that as well, as does the Classroom B, the ball guy who looks like he's super grown. <laughs> yeah, some of these characters are unrealistic yeah. <laughs> as students. Especially all the female, well, not all. Arisu has more of a realistic body, but everyone else is busty. That's a female, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Uh, so speaking of Arisu, she was taken from a side by the president, Susanae's brother, and he point blank blank asked her, what do you know about S system? Because her class is the best, which kind of, I guess, lets us know that she made sure her class did the best. And it's like, why would you ensure that unless you know about the S system, about all these points and whatnot? Mm-hmm. And I don't know. What happened after that? But it seems like she had the uh, intel about it. And I'm wondering, are alumni not allowed to share this information? Are they, like, under a contract? And if so, why are they not allowed? <laughs> and it seems like this school is really setting people up to go through, like, a survival of the fittest in society. Well, it's kind of like that in real life anyway, in a way. But yeah, it's it's basically, it makes me think of, um, what is that, that show that kind of kicked off, I think it was a movie that kind of, it, it was an inspiration for Hunger Games, uh, Battle Royale. It makes me think of Battle Royale where it's like, instead of people like actually, it's like the other show you're watching too. But they have to outsmart each other, but they have to work together at times. Oh, Tomodachi game? Yeah, it's like that. And it's like, you have to work together, you have to do certain things, but you still need to put your own interests first. I'm just wondering, why does this school have the system? Like, what's the purpose? They say they guarantee that the graduating students will be set in life. They'll have all these opportunities in colleges and such, but wouldn't you, I want to guess, I want to say cultivate, cultivate these students to your ideal person and pave their life to use them after? Well, I think another way of looking at it, going off the title classroom with the elite is basically you're grooming the next generation that's going to take over and run the country. And, Ooh, yeah, and, yeah. You know, like they are the leads, they're the shepherds, and everyone who's not known the classroom of the elite, they're the sheep. So it's like you were seeing how they're they're being trained to be yeah, I made a farming but <laughs> like um it is mainly just because there's so many things I I into that make those references like Xenoblade and Xenogears, where it's like shepherd and, and lamb terminology but like it just seems like that it seems like it's they're being put in situations forced to make decisions that um normal people probably couldn't make you know true very true and there's fight scenes too that's the thing that threw me off i was like wait what i liked it it made it different. I totally thought it was going to be a psychological thriller suspense at a school. And then all of a sudden, fight scenes. Like, yes! Action! Punch his face! Realistically, people would want to do that. Yeah! Yeah. The fight scenes we see, uh, we see Suzune. You wouldn't think she can fight, but she's very good at fighting. But she gets her butt handed to her. Oh, that's right. But she's sick, so there's a handicap there. Yeah, it was raining. That's right. You know the funny thing is, like, uh, Kitaka could have stepped in. That's what I'm saying. Because he's watching, though. He observes everything. He could step in, but he doesn't. So so I don't want to ruin that last half of the anime, like that last arc of the anime, because... You don't see that coming, that ending. <laughs> like, it it really... I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen uh, the movie Lucky Number 11. It's one of my 
favorite movies of all time. And there's a term in it called the Kansas City Shuffle. And basically, the Kansas City Shuffle is to make everyone look left while you go right. And it's, it's an art of deception. And, or you could say it's like sleight of hand, like a magician. And that show, Kiyotako, really does a lot of sleight of hand. So much so that it becomes hard to keep up with how often and who he's doing it to. Bro, he was doing 3D chess and checkers. No, it wasn't 3D. It was 4D. <laughs> <laughs> he was in another dimension. <laughs> like he learned shadow jutsu. No, clone jutsu. Well, what was funny is he did something that was predictable to the opponents. And they're like, yeah, he totally did this. We're going to snuff it out. We're going to prove him wrong and win this game. And he's like, uh-uh, that's not what I did. I made you think I did that, but no, no. I knew what you were going to think. Because yes, you yes. thought I was going to think this, but no, I knew you threw it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, the mental gymnastics in this show is just... You have to pay attention. This is not a show or a manga that you can watch or read passively. You, you literally have to pay attention full stop because it, the slightest thing you'll miss and like for for like who and i because like we're we're always with our daughter a lot of times when we watch something our attention is not fully on it like we're always like making sure like she doesn't fall or hurt herself or something like that um but there are times like when I was watching this and I was binging it, I had to keep going back and rewinding because I would take my attention off and I would miss something pivotal. Oh, like it's you need to have your full attention on that. Like you can't be playing on your phone or anything like that or, or because it calls back to minute details. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, speaking of that, watching it while. Wow having our daughter with us. So when I first saw this, I was watching in Japanese. And now, fortunately, it was dubbed in English. So we are kind of able to, what is it called, multitask? Kind of. I say kind of because, like Mikhail said, you, you need to pay attention. Yeah. And new season's out, season two. It's dubbed also. I am making the decision of waiting until all the episodes are out and then binge it. Yeah. What are I, you finding to do? I'm going to wait. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read read more of the manga, read up to season one, because I would like to come back and talk about, like, the differences between, like, the anime and the manga, because, like, there's so many anime that I start reading the manga and then the anime just starts to annoy me because of so much <laughs> that gets, like cut out of it like you don't want to be spoiled uh, yeah and even then like if i'm watching an anime a lot of times i'll read the manga up to the point where i'm at and stop that's why like uh for instance my dress up darling i've not read past where the anime is same thing for like um uh nagatoro it's not don't believe me nagatoro which i think the next season's got announced already Ooh, yeah, Ooh. that's coming out very soon um just yeah i i, I want to wait because i want to enjoy it i think and that's also kind of diving outside the topic of this anime i think where we've gotten with like netflix and these streaming services giving us entire seasons that we can sit and watch in one go i was that's, doing that it spoiled us because can you imagine like say we go back early 2000s and go back to the 90s there was no concept of something like that nope and if you watch a show it gets good two three minutes of commercials yes you know, it's, it's so annoying like there's right like now i get annoyed when we we watch stuff on peacock like we watch because of her i blame her i'm into you know real housewives i'm into <laughs> like southern charm uh, I might start watching Vanderbilt Vanderbilt Pump Vanderpump Rules. Pump Rules. Oh. I might start watching that stuff. But it's like I get annoyed when Peacock has commercials. 
I, I, I even watched it. Well, the other reason I had Peacock is WWE because of the pay-per-views or premium live events. Let me get that correct. So <laughs> when I when I have to watch commercials, I get to know. I'm like, why? I gotta, yeah. And then, but then there's an option to pay more. I'm like, oh, I could sit and wait. Because, you know, it's, it's kind of like with YouTube. Like, we make YouTube videos. We put commercials in there. People are like, oh, I hate commercials. But they on the other side say, so, yeah, they got to make their money. All right, right. I know. I went on a complete tangent, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to binge it because when I was rewatching it with you, I was so enthralled. I was like, what happens next? What happens next? I got to watch the next episode. I yeah. like that feeling. Yeah. I, I don't like having no way. I think that's why, like, some of the shows that we we usually watch when you get home from work, like, before we just stopped watching them because that having to wait, especially shows like Spy Family, that oh, was yeah, that was such true. a, like, because nothing would happen in, in so many filler episodes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm making a face. I'm making a stinky face remembering that. Yeah. I remember thinking at the end of the episode, that's it. Yeah, she she was she's not happy. You know, and okay, so for future reference, uh, we 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 are going to like in the future after we move, we're going to like set up a uh, a section for like podcasting. Then we're gonna have a video because I think people also like to see video as well. So we'll have something special for you guys to be able to look at instead of just listening. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's uh, I don't have anything else on the, the, the topic. So let us know what you guys thought about Classroom of Elite. What do you think about the manga, the anime? Is there a difference? Do you like the difference? Do you dislike it? Because based off the anime, I liked it. Yeah, it was really good. I, it, there's not a lot of anime that catches my attention. You know, a lot of stuff I'm finding just because of recommendations, but a lot of it is like, oh, okay, this is tropey. I know where this is going to go. This is one that actually made me think like, okay, where does this tie? Where is this going to go? So I'm pretty hooked, you know, and it's not a lot of stuff that has been doing that for me lately. So I'm definitely invested in this show. So other than that, thank you guys for listening to Podcasts Across Worlds. I'm your host, Lehu Superfina. You can also find me all across the board in social media at Lehu Superfina. And you can find me, uh, I am Mikhail Casanova. You can catch me across the board on, just look up Mikhail Casanova. It's everywhere. So Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok. I am all over. Same handle across the board. So thank you guys for listening to this episode talking about Classroom of Elite. Keep watching anime, keep reading manga, and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next one. Stay safe. Be blessed.